Hi everyone and welcome back, this is Sky coming on to talk to you about the really exciting, really um, sparkling new moon in Sagittarius we will be having on November 23rd, 2022. I hope you're all doing really well. Um, I'm very excited to be coming on to talk uh, about this moon to you all because it is signifying a major paradigm shift. We have just come from one of the most um, <laughs> jaw-dropping eclipse seasons that we've had in a long time, the October 25th solar eclipse, the November 8th lunar eclipse, uh, blood moon lunar eclipse, and now we see a really big surprise coming in and a really big uh, re-activation um, of a certain purpose, certain essence, and I'm, uh, yes, going to speak all about that in this video today. Um, if you guys have been uh, wanting to get more from this channel, be sure to check the description box below. It is on Patreon, and uh, yes, be sure to subscribe if you're new and if it resonates. Okay, so a bit of intuitive messages about the new moon in Sagittarius. Um, first of all, if you're a Sagittarius, okay, um, it's very likely that it's time to uh, get yourself together now. It's very likely that there has been a major uh, recession or a major narrowing that has happened in your life. And now the um, really essential part of you that might have gone unobserved or unnurtured uh, for a long time will kind of spark anew. Being that we've had, yes, this huge... Uh, eclipse cycle in Scorpio and Taurus, with the south node of course being in Scorpio, I feel that this new moon in Sagittarius is going to be really strong because it kind of reminds me of the spark or the flame that happens after the phoenix has become ashes. So we have a rising from the ashes in store here, and I just want to give you guys a heads up, we are already really... Um, going to be experiencing a big change in how things work alchemically. Um, the 2023 energy is already kind of starting to uh, fade in here, um, though it's not strong. But yes, uh, keep subscribed to my channels. I will be making a 2023 year ahead video uh, soon. So um, what is this meaning? This is meaning that those previous sources of comfort, those previous means, those previous bridges that we had been building from point A to point B in our lives may not be to what we're looking toward for uh, guidance now. I feel that there's a comfort zone that is no longer safe to be in with this new moon in Sagittarius. I feel that a lot of people are um, really caught out as well with this energy. I feel that a lot of people, you know, you know, like the feeling of hot air or the feeling of not being able to support something that was perhaps inflated or perhaps uh, really built up by words uh, really crashes now. And there's an entire rebuilding or an entire new spark or flame around what people actually want in their lives. So the marketing versus the product, right? The uh, words versus the result, the promises versus the outcome, okay? Um, those things are going to really start to change up here. And I just, uh, I feel this is a very joyful new moon coming in. I feel that it's not going to be easy for people because it's changing relationship dynamics, okay? Um, it's changing up spectrums of independence. It's changing up also uh, levels of confidence and, yes, really pushing people to step past their comfort zone and to just be their own confident, real selves and to see how much they can flourish there. So first major intuitive message that I'm feeling about this new moon in Sag it's time to let a few things go. It's time to let a few facades drop here. It's time to also understand what isn't giving to the future version of you. It's time to understand what is ash in your life. And it's time to really rejoice in the spark of essence that comes as a guarantee of those losses or of those difficulties. So the current nodal axis that we're in, North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio, relies upon some type of paradigm of like a power through loss or growth through adversity. And that has now had it more than half of its first uh, phase. Okay, so it's like moving actually into the second phase of uh, this nodal axis as we have um, uh, spent a lot of time there already. And um, now that we've had the eclipses that a nodal axis always indicate, right? The eclipses happen in the sign that the nodes are in. 
it means that the paradigm is shifting to the next phase of it. So if I can say so many words to describe a very simple thing, we're about to experience a new level of this nodal axis. And yes, that type of thing, uh, we have to really get more precise, okay? So simplifying what we're saying, simplifying and making sharper, making more clear the direction that we're taking, it's very likely that any type of identity crisis is at a major climax point right here. And that this new moon in Sagittarius will help you to kind of like grow and gain the confidence to really express in a more precise and more also confident way. So if you've been struggling with like self-concept, if you've been struggling with a lack of confidence, if you've also been struggling with like self-control or like the inability to stop something that's bad for you, very, very prevalent test with the South Node in Scorpio. Can you release what you know is not serving you? Can you stop the things that you know are hurting you? Can you actually wield your own free will in the meaningful way that it actually matters? So yes, also during North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio, you can have control freaks really predominate and people trying to manipulate each other, people trying to take control of each other because they can't cope with the fact that they can't control themselves. So that is going to move into a new trajectory, into a new category here. Uh, really, we're going to feel that strongly at this new moon in Sagittarius. Um, and we are going to be asked very directly by the universe, starting during this new moon in Sagittarius, to start to control that which we truly can. Okay, so diet, exercise, consumption, uh, simple, simple things that the majority of people can control. That uh, appears to be an important area of um, growth and a new injection of confidence. And also just starting to see the proof in the pudding. There's something about the alchemy that we can see very directly also with the South Node in Scorpio. So knowing when I do X, Y, Z, my life is better. When I do X, Y, Z my life is worse, okay? When I'm out of control with um, sugar or caffeine or whatever it is for any person, I can't focus, I can't get anything done, everything's not very good. But when I say no to those things, even though I think that's gonna be really hard, like within a series of hours, I have all these incredible experiences already starting to manifest. Here we have to be <laughs> adult enough and mature enough to choose the formula that is giving us a better life. Okay, and this is a big part of 2023, you guys. Big part of 2023 is, like, that's a contingency. Like, that that's a contingent point for the year of 2023 is, like, that choice to actually accept or decline what is or is not good for you. And to not get all confused and out of control with impulses. So yes, I know that this, for example, Starbucks addiction is draining my budget. And also it's not good for me. It's contributing like plastic waste to the environment. It's, it's a major consumption issue. And I even like the coffee I make at home better, but nonetheless to have like a semblance of routine, I'm like doing this. So look at that as well, especially during the waning moon. If you're getting this video early before the new moon to understand what you've outgrown and to understand what is just now a matter of habit, almost as a coping mechanism, those things with this new moon in Sagittarius can actually be easily, easily walked away from, easily moved on from, and easily come to terms with. I feel, and, and this is something we're going to actually be struggling with for like, or, or not necessarily struggling, but facing for the next year is like, when do we finally have the strength to do what we know is right for us? When do we finally have the strength to step into the fullness of our power? When do we have the strength to, um, to actually be what we feel on the inside? That's going to be something that this new moon answers. And to a degree, that's a bigger theme for 2023 year ahead, which we will talk about in that video. So um, as this new moon in Sagittarius comes in, um, try to, because it's going to feel really good. I actually think that majority of people who have even remotely been able to work with the energy of the last year, like kind of good at all, <laughs> um, it's going to feel like, yes, I've done it. Or there's going to be this feeling of like, 
I'm unstoppable or, or like, and, and these are kind of like exaggerated feelings, which Sagittarius can invoke. Um, but I think it's going to be very um, medicinal for some people as they feel, as they due to their hard work or due to their commitments, due to their work ethic may now have nearly some type of incredible guarantee of elevation or promotion or graduation or things like that. That's inching closer and closer as I feel, and I was about to talk about this at the beginning of the video, but I got sidetracked. Um, if you're a Sagittarius person, you would have noticed that your energy was all perhaps all wonky ever since Jupiter was in Capricorn in 2020. I think that this new moon in Sagittarius is going to be a first step of, of still a few more steps uh, needed to getting back to you and getting back to your sacred Sagittarian self, like where you don't let things like paychecks or money or structures or material uh, imprison you. As I feel that that's a very prevalent place for many Sagittarians right now, like ever since they went through 2020, ever since they... Uh, had to deal with that Capricorn triple conjunction. I mean, you see like a lot of Sagittarians actually in like the public eye, for example, not perhaps as popular as they used to be, or uh, perhaps even scrutinized for their uh, less, um, I don't know, Saturnian ways, their less frugal or less or more impulsive ways. Uh, that has lost a lot of popularity. And you see this in like social media, you see like influencers and like Instagram models, like kind of very Sagittarian stuff, like comedians or... Um, even like politicians, all ruled by Sagittarius, um, becoming like uh, scrutinized to a higher degree than ever. And this is not all Sagittarius's fault. This is also because of having had the triple Capricorn conjunction, which is a semi-sextile angle to Sagittarius, which is not harmonious. So both the signs Sagittarius and Aquarius are damaged a little bit from 2020. But especially Sagittarius, because Sag is ruling planet Jupiter, was in the sign of Capricorn, which it's debilitated in. And I feel that this last pass that it's making into Pisces as it prepares to go into Aries for the last time uh, should be a good opportunity for people with Sagittarius um, to actually reclaim themselves and have, to some extent, a revival of like self-trust and confidence but it's not going to be the same as it was before. And I mean, if this resonates for you, you don't even have to be a Sagittarius because this is also a collective theme. It's not going to be the same before. It's not going to be like things that once made us feel bad now don't make us feel bad anymore. It's going to be like, wow, now I actually understand the solution. I'm going to follow through on that and no longer have this problem in my life. And then, wow, look at all the confidence and self-determination and assertiveness and capacity that I'm left with after having done the best thing for myself and having honored uh, myself and my loved ones at every level. That is something, or that feeling is something that I think that this new moon in Sagittarius will evoke in people or will evoke in them the desire to generate that for themselves and, and make it seem more possible. So taking a look uh, just at the astrology for this new moon, I want to direct you to the uh, mini Pisces uh, stellium, triple conjunction that we have there with uh, Neptune and Jupiter and the asteroid of Nessus uh, all retrograde. Okay, so um, whew, at the same time as this new moon, we have an incredible amount of emotional energy uh, pegged to something. There's a feeling of like make or break or um, healing a huge amount of karma right now. And again, it's getting hard, you all, for me to not even talk about 2023 because it's getting so close and we're already almost to December. But I will say that this is a big part of 2023 as well, but I don't want to give you guys all the spoilers for that year yet. I mean, it's going to be like a super long video when it comes time for that. But this dynamic of like being held down by a trauma from the past would be really poignant right now if you're struggling with that the retrograde pisces energy is also like escapism addiction i definitely think with jupiter and neptune like uh, illusions of grandeur very likely with those two retrograde 
And some people almost need it as like a medicine for themselves to like offset the white walls and gray sweatpants of the COVID era, you know, 2020 situation. Can I get an amen for that? Like we have this sort of like want to really, you know, dress in the beautiful clothing and get out in the world and like be back in that, in that um, place that we didn't want to be anymore. Okay. Collectively and try to place yourself within that in some way. Like, what do I mean? Like understand to what degree that is accurate or not for you. Not everybody feels that way, but um, it's good to know it because it's a big psychological thing that the collective is gonna be ha having. And I'm already seeing this um, flare up really strong uh, towards the end of 2022, like uh, major coping within like themes of appearance, clothing, um, self-expression, which I think was highly needed but it has to go deeper than this skin level. So to just like dress up in the designer clothing without also making the nearly like surgical adjustments at the level of like psyche, energy, and also physical health would be a feeling of like chaos and pain right now. So because things are so deep with the South Node in Scorpio, with this mini Pisces stellium, the asteroid of Nessus being there is not auspicious either. That's a kind of revenge oriented asteroid that deals with like getting people back or like uh, one person trying to like right the wrong of many people. It's not an auspicious asteroid, especially retrograde. So combining it with that Neptune Jupiter situation, it says to me that there is um, something that hasn't been made right. Almost like the words that I'm getting is like something that hasn't been atoned for. And then there's going to be this kind of like deep motivation that starts to form in a lot of people of like, how can I be an agent in of atonement or like an agent of like uh, making things right? Okay, so I don't know, maybe a lot of people are going to law school, maybe a lot of people are, um, you know, getting involved in the legal field, this could be very possible with that indication also with this new moon in Sagittarius and the way that it will uh, square Jupiter, Neptune, and Nessus. And I think that um, at the personal level, so at the personal emotional level, like this feeling of maybe like um, getting oneself back, this is the positive expression of that triple conjunction, is like um, reclaiming a part of your essence that you lost, that maybe someone else took from you, okay? That can be a nearly like life-giving feeling here like the feeling of success so so it, it, on the negative side it's like wanting to reprimand or bestow consequences on other people perhaps recklessly and then on the positive it's a reclaiming of essence that might have been taken from you a long time ago and as you start to reorient with yourself we have like the one of the most beautiful feelings that people can have and subsequently what's kind of difficult is maybe the knocking down or the questioning, at least, of what structures generated during that interim phase of personal loss and personal reclaiming. Oh my gosh, you guys, that's got to go into the 2023 videos. I'm like, that's such a good download. That's such a good download. I'm sorry, I'm excited. That's really the crux of this time and will be a major crux of the 2023 year cycle, um, is understanding how to work with what came in, in that interim period between personal loss and personal reclaiming, because I feel that the reclaiming is happening like right now for a lot of people. So it's gonna be like a new dialogue that they have to undertake with themselves. And this new moon in Sagittarius right after these eclipses, one of the reasons I'm making this new moon video, I don't always make every single new moon or full moon video, but this one I wanted to because it's right after these big eclipses and you know Jupiter's just gone back into Pisces. So the moon cycles right now would be really, um, uh, important in the collective as a catalyst. It's almost like the best moon to have after all of this has happened because it's giving some fire back to the situation because it's been very cold, right? It's been very like sterile and cold with all the Capricorn energy, the Aquarius energy, the Pisces energy, Scorpio energy, even Taurus. It's very yin cold and and dark okay and at long last we actually have some light and fire coming in here to heat things up and to 
uh, counterbalance also Mars and Gemini helping with that, but Mars retrograde in Gemini, which will oppose this new moon um, over the next few days. Uh, yes, there could be major impulsive moves, but for just depending on how it acts in your chart, it can actually be very lucky or it can be um, cavalier, you know, in a way that can be beneficial, but also for people who might have a, a more negative version of this transit, uh, careful about the words, careful about what you're saying. There could be like diarrhea of the mouth here. There could be um, over speaking, overdoing, over uh, also accidentally telling secrets or um, putting people in, in difficult situations during uh, conversations. Watch out for that. And watch out, uh, just be mindful about how cavalier you are about perhaps taboo subjects or anything that is um, maybe something that other people don't want to uh, go into so deeply. Um, I feel that people have to be very uh, conscious about what they are implying in the undercurrents as well. So having a certain like popular thought frame that actually has like almost like a violent implication, but maybe we don't understand that it does is likely right now. Like maybe not understanding the implications of the message you've sent or the words you've said and having to face that now or in time. So that's also a possibility here. But I think as it happens, it also is an aha moment for people to start to to start to have new dialogues and to start to also come to like new opinions and new um, ways forward. Um, yes, is there any other astrology that I want to talk about here before we conclude this video? Um, I would just remind you guys again, as I said in the November 8th eclipse video, the Saturn Uranus square is over, okay? Uh, Saturn has moved direct, Uranus has moved retrograde. Uh, to an extent, for now, that says that Saturn has kind of taken the upper hand, and um, in some ways, the tried and true uh, conventions will have a certain uh, primacy here. So that's good to know, but it's important to know that that's over, and it's important to assess the collateral damage of the Saturn Uranus square. Some of us, it might be like the end of January before we've been able to properly do that. But understand that that will be an important thing. What, whether it's in like body or holdings or relationships, what has been collateral damage and what can you do regarding that? Because that needs to be settled very quickly as we have um, a really life-changing year of 2023 to talk about. Anyway, everyone, yes, I think I'm going to conclude. Uh, keep in mind that that Saturn Uranus square is over, though. That's something to be victorious and rejoice about. Um, come check out my Patreon page. I do weekly forecasts every week on there called T-Chats, which are great uh, premium forecasts, and it's a great way to support this channel as well and keep it possible. Also, subscribe if you're new. Um, I put out new videos. I try to every week, but yes, December is going to be jam-packed with some really exciting content. We have my favorite video, 2023 Year Ahead forecast uh, coming in December, as well as um, a global dynamics for the end of 2022 and other um, interesting installments. So um, I'm very excited. And the 12 general forecasts should be coming uh, at the end of the month and beginning of December as well. So thank you all so much for uh, being uh, a part of this channel. And I appreciate your time and I hope that it was helpful. Uh, have a great new moon. It is an enjoyable one to have. Much love. Bye.